We have with us, we're very honored to have a special guest speaker from Toronto, a noted rabbi, author, professor. It's my honor and privilege to introduce Rav Agon, Rav Emanuel Shochat Shlite, should address the Oilam, Rav Shochat. Mishnah, which he started writing when he was 22 years old. 
23 years old, and what did he set out to write in the Pirush Mishnah? Also, a comprehensive Pirush on Mishnah, which would include basically Gemara. But all of this also, but his Pirush Mishnah is a constant introduction to all those who want to learn Gemara. But you get the basic concept. In his lengthy Hakdom and his lengthy introduction, uh, he elaborates the different types of halachas that are, what is called halachas Moshe Sinai, what is uh, what we have the Kabbalah, etc., etc., to make the distinctions how the effect of Moshe's halachas was. And uh, for that matter, he did not suffice just with uh, giving a perush on the words or the sentences of the various Mishnahs, so all Shisha Sita Mishnah, uh, but he also uh, to bring everything to a conclusion, to pass in halachas. And um, also, he also introduced there many other things which often would not seem to be directly related to the Mishnah, besides the lengthy Akdome to the beginning, for the oil, then you have the lengthy Akdome especially to Seder Kodeshim, Seder Kodeshim, and a real long one, a very important Akdome uh, on Seder Taharat, explaining all the forms and types of Tumor the Taharat that are, uh, which are obviously some of the most complex in the that we have in Aloha. But besides that, within the parish itself, he has also parts which are chiburim in their own right. The famous Akdome, the parish of Syria, the Sanhedrin, where he comes out and concludes with the Timli Kohen. Then he has his parish on Sechus Ovois, which has its own Akdome, called the Shemana Pokim, which gives you a whole lengthy eight chapters full of uh, Raman's uh, notion of psychology, the human soul, what it means, and the human dispositions, uh, yet the turf, yet the horror, the fear of horses, etc., etc. And so likewise, and later on, so you know that even in the Tepeo Shemishnais, he already covers pretty much everything, except concentrating on Tepeo Shemishnais, but also bringing the Halacha, and also bringing the Yon and Fashkofa. And then likewise, in the, the second major work, which is Mishnah Teo, Yata Kuzoka, it's not just Halachas, Halachas. In the Gerus, it's amazing that Ramon writes that he added in the Mishnah Torah not just halochas, halochas, but also in Yonim of Ashkocha, in Yonim of Emuna, which he says any decent Ben who wants to show that he is a Ben and identifies with that, has to have clockite in that, those things as well. So therefore, these, the, the basic principles of the Gimli Kohen, they do not appear there in an orderly fashion the way in the Mishnah is, are also students out there, plus all the other in Yomim, never mind, but he finds pretty much at every end of every space of <coughs> the dollars for him, and very often at the end of each of the halachas themselves, where he brings also in Yomim of Mutzel, in Yomim of Ashkofa, but the, the, the subject which are dealt in that particular uh, thing. And likewise, even the third major verse, which is the Merenimuchim. Merenimuchim is not just a purely philosophical, theological word, the work, um, the Kabbalah find Kabbalah there. People in Halacha can find the Vodka Chalo, find the Halachas or, or Halachic principles underlying many things in, in the Maria de Bochim. And it certainly deals with the Biorin, Biorin is in Gemara, it's in Midrashim, besides all these design concepts. In the Maria de Bochim, in well, the very central chapter in the first part, Raman observes the Kasha and says, he lives in a world which is basically the Shusarabim, all of the Kuda. A world of divisiveness, a world of pluralism, a world of so many different things which are in contradiction with one another. And he asks Saitohan, how is such a thing possible? And he answers the says it's not a world of pluralism and divisiveness. It's a world of Achtus. Because he says the world was created by the Ebishna. The Ebishna is Hashem Echot. And from the one can come only one. So if the Ebshta created this world, there is a total and absolute achtus in the world itself. And he makes that the analogy, he compares it to the human body. The human body where you have all these different limbs and all these different organs, each one completely separate from the other, each one has its own function. So likewise all the components in the world at large also form together this unity, which however we do not necessarily always discover except in the course of time and to see how things fit in and how they collaborate and cooperate. Um, what I want to speak about tonight is not about the Rambam's Kriboim, it works. Hardly we already heard, Psyche we already heard, etc. 
that learning that can go on to, to no end. Uh, I want to speak about the Achtos in the Rambam's life itself. There is as much to be learned from the Rambam's life and from the Rambam's Ashkofa, the Rambam's outlook on certain things, as there is from his actual writings. We'll start with something which he writes in the Akdoma of the Pirush Mishnah, where he says that everything in this world obviously has a substance, has a tachlis. Some of these purposes for which things are created, uh, we can see right away how it fits in. Other things, we have to go through many, many years before we discover what is the value, what is the purpose, what is the goal, what is the tachlis of that object. Other things, still, he says, we on our own can never discover, but only through the Torah, only through prophecy, only in whatever context the Torah is put place. And then he leads that to his concept of the human being, that obviously the human being also has a toughness. And the toughness, the purpose of the human being, obviously cannot be eating and drinking and being involved with all material objectives, all material pursuits, etc., etc., because in that we are really no different than animals. The unique distinction of the human being is his seichel, is his mind, his brain. And if that is the unique distinction, that which sets us apart, then obviously that is a tachlis. A tachlis is to develop his mind, to develop his intellect, but to develop the mind and the intellect not just as an end in itself, that's also a means for, a means for an end, and what is the means for the end? That his mind should come to the recognition of chokhmas keys, divine knowledge, the concept of God's existence, the concept of achtus Hashem, specifically emphasizing all this achtus Hashem, the unity of the Yishter. That is what we have to work on, that's what we have to develop. That is our task. Uh, but even that in itself, he adds, is not a complete end either. Because talking and thinking about Yedir Hashem, Yeshom Motivation, the Mamsi Komen in Zoim, etc., etc., and even after Hashem, <coughs> these can be taken as philosophical concepts. They can be philosophical abstract concepts. So that is not the Tachlis. The Tachlis is that these ideas, they have to affect us. That they have to change us. That we become affected in terms of our leaders, in terms of our character traits, in terms of our behavior, in terms of what we are and what we are supposed to be. <coughs> to, bring, uh, to bring about the, uh, the idea of Ish Chochom Betoyf, a wise person <coughs> and a good person. This is what it has to lead to. You know what? You have to learn, and this learning <coughs> should, should be in such a way that uh, it affects us. This uh, famous miner in the, in the Zoya, uh, the Zoya says, that Chamoyer is a Rosh Hashanah. What's the Rosh Hashanah of Chamoyer? Chochot Muflo Vedaf Rabbonam. A wondrous scholar and a rabbi's rabbi. But the Rosh Hashanah is what? Chamoyer. You can be a Chochot Muflo Vedaf Rabbonam and fly in a Chamoyer. It's similar to what the Second Chodesh of Ovid, but the Chamoyer was the point. The donkey who has a whole library on his back, he has all the books. Today when you buy a dick. You have the days when you have Kol Atero Kulo, everything from 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 uh, from Nach from Tnach all the way to the latest Avraim. The Talmud of the you can hold it in one hand. But Chamoyin is a foreign. What is Chamoyin is a foreign because it, it doesn't affect the person. This is the more related. That was this Haitzuber Rabbanon who was a bookie in all of Shas in the Tzefes and all the Rashi before even the, before the other all the Rashi. And he passed away at a young age. So they came to Rav Nachman to be mastic. And he refused. Not coming. Rebbe, such a gewaltig atom at Chochom, a belt going, etc. He knew everything by heart. He had to come. And he dismissed it and said, Same more the Safra. It's a basket full of books. Today you find Same more the Safra written in what the Bastor. Maybe the origin of that expression is from that Gemara, and there it's not a, not a compliment, it's the exact opposite. What means Sanamon is after, a basket full of books? Yes, he has all this knowledge, but it hasn't affected him. And that's what the Ram is talking about. What the Ram is talking about is not just the learning, it's not just the knowing, it's not just developing your intellect and becoming uh, the smartest person on earth, 
but it has to affect you to the point that it, change, it changes your personality, that it changes pushes your meter. In the Mölle de Wuchen, in the last chapter, still there, the Ramam writes how the Hebrew word Chochmo has four different meanings. One meaning is the knowledge of those truths which Boshit leads in the Hashem. The second meaning is Chochmo that we use in practical workmanship. Every craftsman, every person, you have to learn his job, so you learn. That's also Chochmo. The third one is the acquisition of moral virtues. Now, the acquisition of Midas, uh, which develop over the course of life with age. And the fourth meaning of Chochmo, he says, is in the sense of harmonious, of cunning. Um, how to achieve a certain goal that you set your eyes on. And then he says the following. One who knows the whole tale of properly is called a Chochmo. Why? In a double sense. Number one, that the Torah instructs him in all the ultimate truths, that is. And number two, that it teaches him also the proper midos, that is, the Torah contains. Thus he interprets what the Gemara says about the ultimate Yermadin, where we are asked, Kovato eating the Torah, Pilpalto the Chochma, and Hevanto Dolo the Dolo. And he interprets this the following way. He says, the order of these three things, of Sakto Batero, of Kabat Eat in Batero, the Batero, and to Pato Bechochmo, and the Hevanto Dolo, the Test Dolo, the order follows a very precise order in this way. How so? Kabat Eat in Batero, he says, is the first thing that we have to do. Posh it, sit, and learn. Learn, posh it, the Torah, the Messero, the way it was handed down, the way we had it. Posh it, get easier. Call it, I would call it the Kiel. Get Bosch the key in, in the third that we have. The second one, to Palto the Chochmo, he says, after that you have to analyze and understand all the things that you have learned. Don't just have the knowledge, don't just be the Chamoyimur for him, but try to understand and analyze what does it mean and what does it imply, what are the practical implications. And then, he wants to do with the that now go and define and apply it in your personal life to change it, change your lifestyle. This is the ideal that Rambam puts for you. <coughs> but before you can reach that Chochmah, before you can really delve and reach these goals, there is a prerequisite. There is something which has to come first, which Rambam very heavily emphasizes, and that is commitment to truth. And I'll spend the greater part of what the Rambam has to say about that. Commitment to truth. What does that mean? Mm. Again, he writes in one place that after all, uh, only <coughs> truth is that which pleases the Eivishna. And it's only falsehood that causes the Eivishna to be coming off the line later. In the Shemayna Prokhi, which is an introduction to Pirush and Obris, and that introduction to Tirshim always has an introduction to itself. I have so much to do with Shemayna Potting. There the Rambam describes what he's doing with Shemayna Potting. And there he writes the following. Uh, somebody reading now this Sefer will, before too long, discover things that he has seen in other Sefer. In other Sefer, or for that matter, the half even in other books. And therefore he will accuse me of plagiarism. Take to somebody else's uh, work without giving credit. So therefore I make an announcement right up front. I'm not guilty of plagiarism. And I have two reasons why I did not quote my sources, my credit. Number one, and this is the Rambam generally, this is the biggest accusation against the Rambam, uh, that he never writes his materials. That, that's why we have so many stories, so many tuition with the Rambam. We have given his materials and uh, we don't have so many problems. And we think that we get it from. As a matter of fact, there's a true of the Rambam which he wrote to you know, from the Pinkos in Dying of Alexandria. He wrote in a very sharp letter and uh, criticizing the Rambam, etc., etc. And uh, in also criticizing where we get these things from some writers that you adopt the office. That he is the only one that matters. We don't know where you get your lot from. 
Um, and the Rambam tell, uh, acknowledges, he says, yes, I made a mistake. That he did not write the materials of the Yatta from Adam. And he even brings an incident that somebody came to him and asked him about certain Allahs in Pastons. I think it was in the Yomim of the uh, institution. And the Rambam, um, is it, is it a little vicious or something, and the Rambam referred him, we saw me in the Sechus speaking of the Rambam. There's no I looked there, the first place where I went to look, and I couldn't find it there. So the Rambam suggested another. And he says, no, it's not there either. So the Rambam says, I asked, the Rambam writes this himself, in his letter. So I asked him, give me a couple of days. And Ram says it took him several days to find it himself. Because sometimes our law is, things are not, in the, in the Gemara things do not go everything in all the fashion. You can have one concept of a certain union, which may be soon in different Gemara, there are certain Gemara which are dedicated to certain things. <coughs> and sometimes you have an incidental sentence in a completely different message, which has nothing at all to do with the subject, and that brings you to, to the conclusion of the Allah being that way. And Ram says it took me, being the author, several days to find the model. And I'm totally sorry I should have done that, and he undertook that he will write uh, another paper in which he will give all the materials. But unfortunately, he never got around to it. Um, so, he, he, but there he gives another reason. The, basically, on one hand, the same reason he says of Mishnah Torah. He has in the Abdomen of Mishnah Torah, he says, why does he not give materials and all that? He take, adopts the style of the Mishnah, of Rabbi Yudha Nosi, to get straight to the point, to give the halochas, halochas. And uh, without going into al Imam and and Bishmaya Fokin, uh, he says, um, I try to be as brief as possible. Straight get to the point that thing. That's why it's all right any thought. Second reason, he says, is the following. He says, it is for what I wrote in the Shemayna Fokin, I have not only taken from Chazal. Yes, I have taken from the Hafto, from the non Jewish philosophers as well. He's quoting their things from Aristotle, he's quoting their things from the Arabic philosophers, Avicenna and Al-Farabi. And he says, that's why I did not want to mention the sources. Why? Because you can get some Kinoi, and he's going to pick up this paper, and he's going to look here, and he says here, and Aristotle says, and Al-Farabi says, and Avicenna says, the Baltic is written. Shkot is going, pagan, this is that. It, you, you bring the tumor in, 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 in Dusha, it doesn't matter. Fact! And he was thrown away. So that's why I did not say that. I divided it for them. So he brings the following sentence, the same sentence. Kabel is for Edmund and Misha Omar. Truth we have to accept regardless of the source, regardless of the source. Whether it's a Jew, <coughs> all the half dollars are dollars, a non Jew. Similar to what he says in the Yabakha Dokha, in the Yabakha Dokha, in the Yabakha Dokha, in the Yabakha Dokha, that the, what, he te, what he has learned there, what he has put things together there, he took that from the Chachmu with Soilon. And the other country, that the Tate wants to come to the Yodhi Soho, the Yodhi Vino. They had all these secrets, they knew the whole council project. But the, what they wrote this for is they're completely lost. But he, so he took it from the Chachmu with Soilon. And he says, there's no problem with that. Because these are not their opinions, these are not their ideas, these are basic scientific calculations, mathematical calculations, which can be checked. You can check, but it doesn't matter if a boy tells you that 2 plus 2 is 4, that's something which you can check out. So if that is true and you find it, so there's nothing wrong with taking it there. So therefore it's the idea of Kabbalah and Emerson Shom. That's, that's what he quotes there. But, but that it turns to the Ramban a general guideline in everything. Kabbalah and Emerson Shom, regardless of. In that context he explains the Mishnah, the Mishnah in Elias, where the Mishnah says, the Loma Matir in Divra Yochit Bein Hamurumi. Why do we mention in the Mishnah the opinion of an individual authority when the majority, Yochit the Rabbi, the Rabbi holds it from faith? Bein Aloha Elohi Divra Hamurumi. And the Aloha is like the Rabbi says. And the Mishnah answers, Shem Yere Bethin, as Divra Yochit, he is Machalot. That is the best who may see this opinion of this Yochit. And they feel that we need this stuff like this, there has to so that something is going on. So therefore, Rabbi Rabbi Dranotti quotes the Dati Yochi, so we should know. Even though it's normally Yochi Rabin or Yochi Rabin, but in such a case, but you have something to say. Some similar to Ksai Rabbi Shimon, this is not a lot of Shah's but here it goes even further. That Boshik is that the message should pass to the Allah.
not a missionary point, not an even with that religion uh, there. And says the Rambam of that, that Rabbi uh, Yudanossi recorded these singular Das Yochi views alongside the majority for sometimes the Western wants to follow the Yochi and therefore he teaches us that what is the underlying principle here? That if the argument is correct and clear, even if it be by the Das Yochi, negates the Rabbin, it is accepted. Do you understand If the end appears more clearly the Das Yochi, then that's what the best one has to follow. Moreover, he adds, that's why he also recorded even opinions that have been dismissed. For example, in Machloikism, between the Shammai and the Silo, sometimes the Silo listens to what the Shammai has to say, and they accept what the Shammai says. Why? Because they feel that what the Shammai says here, yes, is more true than the opinions to which, to which I attach myself to. So which the Roman again adds, when these experts that they recognize that there are a lot of truth and righteousness, they will battle their own God and accept what the Shammai says. Then the Rambam concludes, when these great men, righteous, understanding, completely knowledgeable, and of uh, eminent scholarship, saw that the opinions of their disputants are more correct than their own, and that the other person's analysis is better, they accept them. And he concludes, how much more so should other people, when seeing the truth in the argument of their opponent, turn to it without being actionist, stubborn? This is the meaning of Tzedek, Tzedek, Tzedek. Of this, the Chazal say to be made out of it. I think not much truth. It's true, it is true. This means that even if you could save faith with polemic counter-arguments, and you get to the whole, uh, <laughs> a whole other dispute, and uh, you're too embarrassed to admit that you are wrong or that you might be wrong, etc. So the Ramam says, even if you could save faith with polemical counter arguments, meaning with the cooking and the pudding, if you know that the other person's words are true, but your argument happens to appear clear, somehow the other person doesn't know how to convey, he doesn't have the chit is unable to express himself in such a way that everybody sees that he is right. He is <coughs> mumbling there. Yeah. And you do have the chit to so therefore you are there, you take advantage of the situation, and you make the whole tilt of the vast of Yerem, etc., etc., uh, all because you are able to twist the things with draw to his position and abandon the argument. And he adds, truth does not depend on popularity. He writes in the Abdomen to the Mayor of the that he would rather teach one intelligent person who understands what he is saying than 10,000, even if that displeases 10,000 fools. Not concerned about the other. And he writes there further on also. When something has been proven, demonstrated, the truth is not enhanced, its correctness is not strengthened by the whole world agreeing to it. It doesn't matter whether people agree or people disagree, that becomes totally irrelevant. If it's true, whether people agree or disagree, it doesn't change one or the other. Nor is it diminished if the whole world disagrees with you. If it is true, the whole world becomes to go to try and hide the talent, the thing remains true. And that's the only thing you have to concern about. Not to try to be nice again with everybody else. And if people sometimes try to defend their positions by means of culturing, so sophistry, different kinds of culturalistic arguments, <laughs> that this does not strengthen what one seeks to prove. But on the contrary, if you have to restore to a whole culture there, and the and the hair of Shakla Vitalia, then this weakens the argument, and it causes its denial. If you cannot prove something, he says, it is better to leave it as a problem. Leave it alone, to be investigated, when you have more time, investigated further, than simply for the position. In the Gerard C. S. Amazing writes the following. Truth is also not enhanced by continuously repeating it. Some people say you keep repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, or to say about a big lie, and you don't want to mention where that came from, so but just keep repeating it, ask why people think that this is the truth. So the one wants, just because people repeat it, does not make it common, does not make it true, nor, if it has not been repeated, does that mean that it is true? In the Gareth Paymon, he writes the following. 
even very important, even the fact that certain things have been recorded and published in books by whoever it may be does not prove anything. People print books today, so today it's very cheap. And there is a computer, a desktop, that you can produce ten for and just like that. It doesn't even talk so much. So the Ram says, just because something is printed in a book, a book, evoke respect. You see a favor, wow! He says, it doesn't mean anything. Just as one can be mistaken or deceived by speaking, one can do likewise with the pen or with the computer. Fools and ignorant people are convinced of the truth of statements simply because it is published in books. But for us, says Raman, that is not enough. We demand demonstration. <laughs> in his famous letter to the Chachmei Marseille, he writes the following similar. The fools have composed thousands of books, and many people advanced in years, the old people, but not in wisdom, waste all their life studying these books, presuming that their nonsense constitutes profound wisdom. Practically all people, with the exception of very few, make that mistake, especially if the books are old. Oh, of course, it's a safer written 500 years ago, 800 years ago, 1,000 years ago. Somebody knew what they were saying. I thought the Kutus of the Rhoyne, the Kutus of the Rhoyne. Just because somebody listened to the Kutus of the Rhoyne, just because somebody listened to the Kutus of the Rhoyne, that's not going to be other going off in other visions. Uh, to Rambam, truth means to be objective and consistent. He did not believe that he was perfect and could not make mistakes. He writes to his uh, famous students of Joseph and Yudha, Stephen Aknin, if I do not boast that I am absolutely perfect, nor that I have never committed an error. On the contrary, if was an explanation other than the one I chose or recorded, I would draw from my, be farther from my in anything. And I'd like at the end of the Kirsha Mishnai is a short sequel in which Raman uh, recalls that he started writing the Kirsha Mishnai when he was 17 years old and he finished it seven years later. And he describes the conditions. He must have started the Kirsha Mishnai when he was still in Morocco, he says. Morocco at the time, for the same reason that Raman's family uh, uh, had escaped from Spain, first had to escape from Cordoba, once it was conquered by the, by the Arabs, the al Mahadis, the al Mahadis are, are worse than today's Taliban, and would uh, not allow any other religion besides their own, uh, they were very anti-intellectual, very fanatical and all that. That's when Raman, father of Maimon, picked up the whole family, and they were wandering for about 10, 12 years in other parts of Spain, Christian parts of Spain, other parts, and even there became unbearable to the escape uh, to, to Morocco. But the Morocco conditions were not much better. Um, there were lots of zealots of Schmack, that the Roman father wanted to get us on the Homo to, to comfort the people, and some assumed that the Roman wanted to get us Schmack also in Morocco still. Because for somebody who came out with a letter before him uh, to the Jews, because many, like he had late in Spain, the Maranos, so likewise he had many Jews who became Muslim Maranos in, in Morocco. <coughs> and was somebody wrote a whole letter condemning them, uh, <coughs> they were burning in hell, and uh, this is unforgivable, etc., etc. Et and that's when the Rabbi wanted to give up Shmat as a response, a counter to that. So someone to say what they can later, uh, but this is these are the conditions. And under those conditions that the Rambam and his family had to hide the Jewishness, uh, they could not uh, profess and practice the Judaism and publicly. That's why he started writing this Pirosh uh, Mishnais. Then the Sar conditions there became after five years there in Morocco, they could not take it anymore, uh, so they escaped. The Roman gets specific details on the Matsu Shabbos, I think the third of Ia, uh, they boarded the ship <laughs> and went to El Soil. And uh, they landed there about a month later, in Sima. Um, he writes there how a week after the ship set, uh, set sail, uh, the boat nearly sank, so practically this is, this is everything, and the boat was just a small says they were safe, and that became then a, a heart in his family for his fame and for his descendants to commemorate that. And now I'm right there at the end of Pirosh Mishnai, that he started writing the Pirosh Mishnai not only in Morocco, but also on that boat he continued. Can you imagine on that boat 
a boat, we can talk about a boat in the half year, was 800 years ago, 900 years ago, and with all the, the, the problems that we had. And what falling could the Rambam have had already there? And the Pirsh, to write the Pirsh and Mishnahis, you have to be literally bottom the shot. How can you explain the Mishnahis, never mind conclude the Halokha Lamaisa, without being bottom the shot? What for is Rambam had was trying to form there on the boat? And on that boat, he continued with the writing. Till they arrived a month later in Earth's soil. And then he continued and he finished writing when, when they came to foster in, in Egypt. So the Rambam writes there the conditions. How I wrote this Perusha Mishnais under persecutions, under terrible circumstances, while there were lots of tragedies, and the tragedies happened in the Ukraine. At first, his father passed away, and then it was a bigger loss of the ice, and they never really recovered from it. The loss of his younger brother, the uh, team was partners in the jewelry business, but he was more of a silent partner, and he gave he invested his money with him, and his uh, brother thought it he. He traveled around making business and he supported Rambam, which allowed the Rambam to sit and uh, learn and write, etc., etc., in uh, And then, but shortly after the came there, he, he spoke signs from the state of the ocean. And uh, the, the, the Rambam writes, he was sick for over here, just from that alone, from the aggravation. And he, he, he had pretty much raised him, so he was my Talmud, he was my, my brother, he raised him on my knees, etc., etc. So, under all these difficult circumstances, he says, I wrote my page. He said, because of that, by took seven years. Which means that had been for these circumstances, he could probably have finished it in three years. He knows how long. And he said, so therefore, no doubt I must have made mistakes. And therefore, he's begging the learners of the Pirusha Mishnah, please send me corrections. I'm sure you will be able to discover the things which you've So it's simply because of the, the, the condition. The master of which he wrote, but not having all these things. So the Amman was not uh, set in his way that this is the way I see it, this is the way I understand it, this is the way I wrote, so therefore this is what you have to say. Stop it. Stop the time. On the contrary, he begged. <coughs> For that matter, he did the same with the Mishnah Torah, the Yatakha Zaka. The Mishnah Torah became very popular very soon. In a short time, it was copied and copied and reached Europe. He actually from to Egypt, all the way to Europe, to France, and he received from the Chachner uh, Luneo which were led by Jonas and Akoyen, um, who had great respect for others in France, the opposite. We had very great respect for the Rambam. And they wrote him a whole uh, letter with uh, lots of shyness on the Christian law. And uh, some, uh, some person, <laughs> you get all the shyness, uh, a whole list of them would be upset. The Rambam wrote a letter of great gratitude, thanking them, thank you, but you do it malachus shemayim, you because again, he says, nobody is perfect. Shvir uh, Miyomi. And other other, the more the questions I get, I'll be correct. For the rest of his life, the Rambam continued editing and revising the Perusha Mishnai as well as the Mishnah Torah. He did not say it the first edition. From the Perusha Mishnai, he changed his mind in literally dozens of cases. Of very part in one name, the Perusha Mishnai. A different thing in the uh, and, the, and he kept revising it. Uh, some of the, but not everybody got the new edited revised edition, so therefore there are many questions, many caches that remain on both. <coughs> so, this is commitment to truth, that you realize that just because I've done the great work and put in a lot of work, the Mishnah Torah writes to the same as the Korean, that he worked on that 10 years, day and night. I don't know how he would have done it even in 100 years. He did it in 10 years. You know, if, if you really think, uh, any consideration of what the Mishnah Torah of the Rambam is, it's inconceivable. I once gave a lecture at the university in which I described exactly what the Mishnah Torah is, what the Mishnah Torah is, and what the Rambam has done, and summarized, etc., etc. After I spoke, was the professor, not from Barak, he said, that's baloney. Impossible. He probably had a whole crew, like professors at universities have a whole uh, class there of graduate students who do all the research and other graduate students who do all the writing, and then maybe he, maybe he will edit it and so forth. So it's, because that is humanly impossible, if you really think. And especially if you take into consideration, Trump was not a free man. 
Okay, the, the, the Mishnah Torah started writing about uh, three years after we finished the Mishnah Torah. It was about 33. Um, he would have started immediately, but he said before it was really Avant, he writes the Mishnah Torah, so he says, I wanted to give a list of all the mitzvahs. Because, uh, all the mitzvahs, so to know, this becomes the foundation of the other mitzvah. To know for each mitzvah, which Allah it goes to, which faith it goes to, the whole arrangement, the whole order is but then I realized some form like that had been written already. The Allah of Zoyla is the Sefer Mitzvah of Rath Chayf Zoyla and several others. And I see that the way they compiled their Sefer Mitzvah is incorrect. They put in there lots of things which do not belong there. Uh, they made lots of mistakes. So therefore I had to start from, uh, to start from scratch. But if I would have written my Sefer Mitzvah, says the Rambam, that's in the Akdoma to the Sefer Mitzvah. Uh, Sefer Mitzvah is really a Akdoma to the Mishnah Torah. That's basically what it is. Uh, that's why it was written. He had no intention of writing it. So then when I saw it, I said, if I would write my Seder of the uh, Mitzvah, meaning the Mitzvah, then people would say, he made a mistake, he doesn't know what he's talking about. The Horaya, the Allah of the Doilus says differently, there are the Seder of Mitzvah of the Chetis Born says differently, then there's the Seder of Mitzvah of the Sadiq Born, and there were various others of the Goyim that also written at these compilations. So therefore I have to explain, Boshet, why I choose these mitzvahs that I put them in the, the happy tradition of Tariq mitzvahs, not the tradition of Shatam and the But what exactly they are, we do not ask for that. So therefore I am going to give that, and there you say for mitzvahs, there's one safer, where it gives you any materials. It's a good thing, it's a more more chazal, he goes a bit more, more detail. But he says even before that, I have to, he has to write an introduction for that, to explain his seder. Why does he put this as a mitzvah and not something else? Not? And that's what gives us the fourth Mishroshim. The fourth Mishroshim explaining exactly what should be included and what should be excluded. Obviously, Mitzvah Sarabon, they say, cannot be included. And Mitzvah Plolios, which talked about the general uh, concept of observing Torah, uh, like Kedoshim Tiyu, shall be holy. The Rambam reads that Kedoshim Tiyu, the Rambam takes it as a Mitzvah, the Rambam doesn't, that it means simply, be holy. Be holy, how are you holy? By observing the Torah Torah Torah. That's how you're holy. And likewise, uh, the Sukhs of the Torah, uh, a Jew is uh, to, to keep all the Mitzvahs. That's a general instruction. That's not a Mitzvah. Mitzvah is only something which is very specific. Do and don't. Do this action, don't do this action. That is including Tariq Mitzvah, not something else. So he says, I have to explain that. So that's why he has these 14 principles which come from the Torah. So that's how he came to write, right after Pirashim Mishnah, he said, all Mitzvahs. Um, and from that he moved over to the, to the Mishnah Torah. Now the Rambam at the time, um, after his brother passed away, and his brother left in Almona with a child, uh, the Rambam had to worry about Panosseh. Panosseh for himself, plus Panosseh also for his extended family of his sister-in-law and his, uh, and his niece. So I think it was a girl that he left. Um, that's when he decided to become a doctor. He had studied medicine already before. He always studied medicine and various sciences already when he was a youngster, a teenager in the state. Because that's when he wrote the minor Ebro. She obviously had to study things. But now it became a professional doctor. <coughs> Not right away, a very proficient. And to be a doctor, the Rambam writes in several places. <laughs> Two places. He says in, in one letter he writes, uh, to be a doctor is not just, okay, you went to college, you got your medical diploma, and now you practice. He says a doctor, especially who is very conscientious, as he writes about himself, has to keep up with the latest data, the latest journals, the latest information that is available, which is extremely time consuming. He writes at the end in, in, in another letter, the famous letter, which he, writes, he wrote to Ibn Tibon, who wanted to come to visit the Rambam in, in, in Egypt, uh, to help that the Rambam should help him in translating uh, the Maria Buch in into Hebrew, and so forth. And the Rambam told him, don't come, because if you come, there's no way I can see you. And he gives him a schedule. His daily schedule. Okay, this was already later, yet not the time was in Israel. His daily schedule, what he says, most of the week, more early in the morning, you have to go to Cairo, the new city of Cairo. First, that was the old Cairo, uh, the Cairo that the Sultan was, the new Cairo. You have to go there and then visit them, the palace uh, with the royal court and uh, all these people. I barely get home in the evening. When I come home in the evening, around my house is a whole line of people that I have to push my way through to get into the house. People looking for my medical advice. <coughs> and I have to push my way through and I have to beg them, please give me a few minutes to grab a bite, the first bite of the day. And then I'm busy till all hours, I wake up at midnight, push a TV station. Yidin and half a day. 
and then I have to look up the medical journal. That the only time I have for learning, the only time I have for teaching Torah is on Shabbos. The Shabbos he gives the schedule for Shabbos. He goes to shul on Shabbos morning, and after that, right after dawn he goes to home, he to the Shabbos, goes right back to shul, and gives shiurim, and people ask questions. And so this goes to the end of Shabbos, and my saw Shabbos, and I go home, he's the shul. There's already a whole line of people waiting in front of the house. So it's this bullshit, there's no time. There's no way I, I want to see you, we'd love to see you. And he gave me such a time to go back, this bullshit is not helpful. <coughs> so then he wrote the Mishnah Torah, it was probably not that busy yet. But still, especially, he, was, he has assumed responsibilities as the leader of the Egyptian community. He, was, he became the Nagi, they call it the Nagi, the prince. The same as the Reish Pelusa in Bolo, or in, in Egypt, also something similar to that. Uh, who had authority given by the government to make all communal appointments but also to tend all his communal needs. And the Raman took that very serious. There are so many letters of his, so many children of his, in which he deals with all this. Never mind all the questions and the uh, problems that he got from uh, Khuslo and outside uh, from there. So, how he could ever have done that, I, I, I really don't know. Does that make any sense? Logic, it makes no sense. Absolutely no sense. Even if even it was 50 years or 100 years, it makes no sense. That's before computers, before disks, before all these things. Call a Torah Kulo, literally. And not just call a Torah Kulo, but he includes in that literally everything, not just from, from Babylon, and Shami, etc., etc., but also all the Jews and the Jewish of the Goyenim, and then the, the, the Reef, and the, his father's Rebbe, the Reb Yosef Alevi, the Migash, and especially the Reef and the Reb Yosef Alevi, those uh, favorites of his, he often, the mission study, always calls him Rabbi Sam, even though he never met him. Rabbi Yosef Alevi, maybe he met him, but he was probably about six years old, when Rabbi Yosef passed away. <coughs> that was his father's letter. Many of the teachers of Yosef, he got from his father's writing, from his father's story. Uh, plus, even his father, he quotes him. Um, so, it, it literally, they call it very good, literally, in the most sense. For one human being to, to do that, it's, it's inconceivable. Uh, but by the same token, that also had the, he had the humility with all the he writes that he was not troubled by forgetfulness, he had a devoutly a memory. Um, say that, that, um, that the Oyster Mayor was going to ask him what he thinks about the rocket shower. But the rocket is gone, that's what he is. The rocket is gone, he thinks gone. He doesn't remember anything. How do you say that? You know, after he writes left and center, all this, all, all it's true, it's just the That to remember something means you have to recall it back. For the Ragacho, he says, everything is right in front of his eyes. He doesn't remember, he sees it. He sees the knowledge of him. And that basically is how it goes with the Rambam. Obviously, you can make his comparison, the Rishon, the Asana, and so forth. But still, but, but in his later age, he, said he did complain, especially the Rambam is not a well person. He writes many letters how he was sick and not well and bedridden, etc., etc. <coughs> and he says, this, and how old was he he passed away? Just less than 70 years. Which uh, technically you can say he's a young man. Um, and already complained uh, 10 years before that how he has trouble with, with his memory and all, all the other weaknesses. He invited criticism. Um, he got criticism. Some criticism was genuine and authentic, positive criticism. But they asked him for something and he changed, he changed that thing. But then there were others who um, attacked him. They attacked him for many different reasons. They attacked him from out of jealousy. Some attacked him because of his Ashkofis. They did not like them. Some accused him of denying he is amazing. Some accused him uh, of other things, etc., etc. That's why you have to write this study, get us information uh, to show that, that to explain what he has, uh, not that he changed anything from what he said before, so all by the same thing, but just to explain where he's where at. Um, and some push it out of uh, viciousness. And we're not talking here about people, we're not even talking about the Machloikis that wrote about the Rambam after the Rambam passed away. The big Machloikis after the condemned. The if our mother was burned, and my mother Wuki was burned, etc., etc., which was a very tragic thing, which, which had all these going back and forth of all the letters which were back and forth of those attacking those who defended him. Um, 
but especially two centers um, of opposition, but we'll come to, uh, to that in a minute. Um, back to this Chuba to Rabbi uh, Yonis to Nell, that Raman uh, writes, after describing all the effort that he has put into his work, in composing the work, who can avoid error? <coughs> and as yet forgetfulness, especially among the elderly, does it is appropriate to examine and check my work. Let not the student of my work say, Mi Yodoi Achraya Melach, that who can, what, what can anyone accomplish in coming after the king? I grant him full permission. You wise men have done me a great favor by questioning my Pitka Aloha. And I will regard it as a favor for anyone finding something to inform me thereof, so that every mission, every stumbling block can be removed. As I said before, that's why he kept inviting it. Now, opposition. Um, especially one cent of big opposition was in Baghdad. There was uh, a the Shiva there, known as Shmuel Goen, the Rosh Shiva Baghdad. And he violently, violently attacked the Ramon continuously. The Ramon's admirers and his uh, students were very upset about that. And the whole to the Rambam, they paid and protested where they were, and the whole to the Rambam, uh, the, these terrible people. Um, but the same Rambam, who in the Yat, in the Hilt of Deus, passed to how the Der Chosmo is to find that everything that Der Chosmo would sell, the golden middle path, no extreme on the right, no extreme on the left. Yes, and everything there for Musa, but he says there are two exceptions. There are two exceptions that you have to go to extreme. What are those? Kars and Gaiba. Kars and Gaiba is going to be nice That's completely off the limit. <coughs> On paper it looks nice, but you can call yourself something else. And the Ramon lives by that. He lives by it. It's stuck. Uh, he wrote to, when he's, uh, it's a very certain acne, wrote him a letter about what is going on in Baghdad, um, and he was furious. The Raman answered him like this. If one has become angry and indignant against everyone who is ignorant of truth, one could never refrain from continuous anger and spend his whole life in a state of anguish. This is not right. All this, the criticism, the slander, the degradation, the Loshim Hore, the Vasilov and so forth, Chai Hashem has not harmed me or angered me. Even if I dare to see the critic with my own eyes and hear him with my own ears, and he would do all this in front of me, I would not pay attention to it. On the contrary, either I would not answer at all, or I would answer strictly to the point of issue with civility and humility. His foolish neglect of truth is much worse than that. I do not seek victory for myself. My dignity and moral integrity are more important to me than prevailing over fools. I beg of you, if you are truly my comrade, following my footsteps and standards, the best thing for you is to let them scorn you and do not retort by scorning them. Be of those who may know in vain or not leave him, of those who are humiliated and do not humiliate in turn. Do not waste your words. Before anything, think of Hashem. He has another uh, admirer in Baghdad, the Yosef Ibn Gabir. Um, and he wrote him, and also complaining, uh, and Raman answered him the following. News has reached me, though I do not know whether it is true or not, that someone there speaks evil about me and tries to elevate himself by degrading me and by misrepresenting my words. I heard also that you protested and reprimanded him. Do not act that way. I forgive anyone who behaves like that because of his foolishness. And how much more so, listen careful, if it seems to his advantage. As he, as he does not harm you at all. He derives benefit, makes him feel good, makes him the big shot, and I suffer no loss. What is really disturbing, the Ramba Mad, is that you bring upon yourself useless quarrels and troubles. I do not seek assistance from anyone, and I leave to every person that which he wishes for himself. In a Shuva to Rabbi Pinchos, the dying of Alexandria, who wrote also some very sharp things against the Ramba, he wrote in the following. My response to your earlier letters was delayed because of my sickness 
and not because of things I heard in your name. I do not listen to Moshe Hobbit. I know that when words are passed from one to another, they change and go along the way. In fact, even if I heard, had heard such things with my own ears, I would know for sure that a certain individual tries to elevate himself by degrading me, trampling my words to the point of contempt, Bo Hashem, I would not sense it, and would forgive and pardon him. The tragedy, however, is that very often we see nice people, so-called religious people, Rosh Yeshivas, Rabbonim, Dayonim, and so forth, who wear the mantle of terror and dark terror and who knows what else, but are far removed from those meager stories that the Raman is speaking about. Uh, the cat that paints, that terror requires. His problem is that you see Blackling noticed that. That's what the second some more. The Rosh Hashiva in Baghdad, the Rabon in there, this going, that going, how could they be so crude and so low to say the things and do the things that they do. Uh, he, he was confounded by this hypocrisy of spiritual schizophrenia. Um, after all, they're supposed to be role models, not the opposite. So the Rambam writes to him, writes in the same letter to the Beersity Latin. Why do you wonder where is this man's sense of justice and religion? To him and those like him, even as it is to the masses in general, justice and religion mean no more than avoiding major avails, major sins. They do not pay attention to the obligation of good character traits, good meters, for they do not regard them as integral part of religious observance and law. They do not watch what they say. With most of the religious people among those leaders, when there is a situation which seems to threaten their power and self-esteem, every sense of humility and meekness is lost and disappears. So much for that. There are two more points I want to mention. Time is getting on. Um, Ram's personality can go on the whole night. Ram was a scholar. No needless to say. Can't become a tongue cochon. Meaning it goes far beyond that. Little far beyond that. And obviously he was an intellectual. Um, to agree that we, with our human mind, cannot possibly comprehend and understand how one human being can change the world. If he had written only one of his major works, his name would have been eternally already praised as his one of the great stories. Then the mission failed. Then the mission failed. Exceeds everything. Never mind all these other singers, came on the years, the amazing years, the shmat, uh, the hun literally hundreds and hundreds of onshuvas, etc., etc., some short, some lengthy, some whole treatises, etc. Um, people like that who have these intellectual capacities, who have such a mind, generally tend to withdraw. In the nature of the intellectual, they lock themselves up in ivory towers. And they haven't got the time to deal with the masses. No patience and no, no time for that. There are many more important things to do than that. Uh, it's a waste of precious time. Not so the Rambam. Like we said before, he was very involved in the daily life, communal life of the Jews in Israel, in Egypt. Plus, as he got letters from all over the world, it's a problem. He gave payments that literally saved the Yemenite Jewry from the whom and his father. He was a Nogit, and every Jew was there to I mentioned before years of Ibn Gabia of Baghdad. He was not a scholar. Uh, he did not master, he did not even master Russian and Turkish Hebrew. Uh, that was unable to read original texts that were written in Russian and Turkish. He wrote the Rambam a letter. He had studied the Rambam before the Pirsha Mishnai, all the other things that say from from Mixus, which also written in Arabic. Everything the Rambam wrote was in Arabic, except for Mishnah Torah. And some sure. Um, so he had mastered all of these and he heard this, this Mishnah Torah. So he wrote to the Rambam a letter begging him. He said, Rebbe, I'm an Amoret. I'm an ignoramus. I can't read Hebrew. Please arrange for somebody to translate the Mishnah Torah into Arabic so that I can study that as well. The Rambam replied, listen carefully. You state that you are an Amoret. 
I note, however, from your letter that you make great efforts to study Torah and that you occupy yourself a great deal with my commentary on the Mishnah, but that you are unable to understand my Mishnah Torah because it is in evil. Now, first of all, he says, you must know you are not an Amoret, but a Talmud dearly beloved to me. This applies to anyone who seeks to become involved in Talmud Torah, even if understanding but a single person or a single halacha. It makes no difference whether one understands it in Loshna Kurdish or in Arabic or in Aramaic. It matters only whether it is understood regardless of the language. The most important thing is that you be involved in learning. He who forsakes learning or never studies at all, of him it is said as far as and this refers also to one who, out of laziness, fails to enhance his learning. You can be the biggest problem, problem but you stop learning, same positive applies. Even if he be a great scholar, for he neglects the all comprehensive mitzvah of Talmud Torah. It reminds me of the Rebbe Rashad's word. Um, who is a Ganesh? A Ganesh is not somebody who knows how to steal. Everybody knows how to steal. A Ganav is the one who actually steals. So likewise, said the Rebbe Shaf, who is a London, a London is not somebody who knows everything in his head. A London is the one who sits and learns. That's exactly what the Raman is right here. Exactly the same thing. Let be one person. Let be one Allah. Whatever it is. But learn. Be involved. Oisik Paterno. I say to you, the Raman continues to not disparage yourself nor abandon the prospect of achieving perfection. There are great scholars who started the studies at a very advanced age, yet developed as they did. Now, these are moving, really moving words of a super scholar, a super intellectual. The words of a man, as I said before, whose achievements defy the imagination. It's a concern for every single Jew, even somebody who didn't know how to learn to learn to speak Hebrew. The second point I want to make is that the conclusion is the Raman Siyam of the Mayan Mohim, the last chapter, which I find to be one of the most beautiful and most inspiring things that have ever been. That really compounds everything with that world of truth. Normally, as like I said before, we make a distinction between Mishnah Teo and the Mohim. This is purely religious ritual law, this is philosophy and theology, but it was after the Shem in both of them. The Akhla Hashem is reflected in God's creation. There is an analogy and a relationship between the Mishnah Torah and the Moyer Rukhim. Both begin and end with the same thing. Abarun Mishnah Torah, starting with Sarita Yisraelia, from the Chokmot, Leida, Shiesha, Motri, Rishon, Shumam, Tikon, and Nimto, to know the Gizir Hashem. And it concludes, of course, with the Moyer Mashiach, is the ultimate goals of what would happen the ultimate achievement bliss of the Maestro Mashiach is that Yafsigu Das Boyram that will all know, have the knowledge of their the creator Kefikoya for Odom according to the strength of the human being Shanema as it says the more law is there the Shem Tumayim Yom Mechati beginning with that and then and from that we start the Ram again but from that we go to a higher level start with the Shem and continue on and on and on like us in Maya Nebuchim he starts off with describing and defining the first chapter, Salam al Kim. What does it mean to tell many people the same? And he defines that exactly the same way as he got in Hilbert to say that they are. Now this is the, 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 the ability that we have to acquire and achieve the Yisra Shem. <coughs> um, in the last chapter, he concludes with the Peyush of the Foreman Supreme.
drama be told by this. All these solid problem Chochmah. So he says, the Novi is here enumerating three things. Chochmah, Dvua, and Moshe. And these are the three things that people value, that people look up to. Not in the order that the Novi says. It is, you know, the order of the Novi says, both men are called and the Kohen. What people value most is Moshe. Wealth, richness. Second place, Dvua. And third place, bottom of the line, is Chochmah. And even that Chochmot, says the Rambam, what does it mean? Only Sala Chochm be Chochmot, sorry, his wisdom. He knows even his, the wisdom that is needed or is tactical in worldly affairs to achieve your ends. So he says, what are these three things? They are external from the human being. Because they have nothing to do with the penis of the person. They do not affect the person, they do not change the person, they do not transform into that which he is supposed to be. What then is required? He be zoisi sala be sala hastel ve yadoya oisi yadias Hashem. This type of chokhmah, this type of sikhir, that's the only thing that can affect the person. But what is it? Yadias Hashem, however, can also be an abstract philosophical thing, as we said before. But Ram says that is not what is acceptable, because the pasuk continues, ki ani Hashem oise chesed. Mishpot with stocko boores. I am Hashem who does chesed, mishpot, and stocko. And where boores on earth, down here below, the matter. And that is what we have to say. Heaven comes the midst of heaven dominoi. The same as he says in Hebrews thirty-two. He starts with the dear Hashem, but he doesn't leave it with the dear Hashem. Says the dear Hashem is only the first step to lead you to the building the midst of after Hashem. And if the Yedir Hashem and Achus Hashem by themselves are also not enough. That's also abstract concepts. They have to lead to Yerat Hashem and Avat Hashem. Because Yerat Hashem and Avat Hashem, they depend on Yedir Hashem. That the feed the Yedir proportional to the Yedir Hashem will be the Yer, and the proportional to the Yedir Hashem will be the Avat Hashem. So if they do not lead to their, what's the point? What's the point? And here again he emphasizes that. That this is what is demanded of us, the sum total, uh, to Lapis, Chesed, Mishpot, and Stockholm, and specifically where Dafke here Boorit. The concept of Dira Betach Taimi. It's that the Sarah Kodesh Kor here for Dira Betach Taimi. And Dafke here Lamato, Shein Lamato, Hanenu. And which shows that the Abishno is not out there. The Abishno is in, is in not only the Abishno is in the Boise Oilam, it's Abishno near on Moshe Hashem, the Kerosh and Stich and Erzim Sein. The Abishno is involved with the world. The Abishno is that this Ingen of Ashkoche Potis relating to everything occurring, to everything occurring here, here on earth. Only that, that concept, that is what will affect the person and change him. Um, and the, the Rebbe continuously emphasized the words of the altar have been done yet. The top is the shlame of the day, shall be moist on the shield, see it amazing. Should be the oil in softball, who boil them as they. Told over my thing, around with the thing, who calls my mesh of a dollar. This is the idea of the shen that the Ram is emphasizing. The Marseino and the very Marseino, specifically in context of Hebe Doimeloi, which is a drum and count of the mixture of all of the Ramachmi to the say. Um, leading to the point of the Rebbe's slogan of a Maise Huika, which will then lead from the Sidi of the Shem at the beginning of the Mishnah Torah to the <coughs> seal of the Mishnah Torah. Uh, <coughs> like you said before, that the Asigo Das Boyom Kifikoya Odom Shenema Molo Oet Teya Hashem Kmaim Yom Echasim Takes Bargol Di Don Mamish. Thank you very much, Rav Shochat. To give you room to yearn, we should be able to continue with our Gottes Hatoiro, Hatos Sayadus, and Hatos Samayonis.